Welcome to Italian Innovators. I'm Luca Cottini. And today I'm in the company of Ale Gambini, chef and food ambassador in Los Angeles, writer, award-winning host in online food programs, recipe developer, blogger, and cook instructor. So uh, there's a lot to discuss about your story, about your work, but we'll do this uh, during our time together for now. Welcome to the show and thanks for accepting my invitation. Thank you for having me. It's such a great pleasure. So today we'll talk about Italian food as a creative platform, as a form of cultural diplomacy, as an art of living, and as a subject of many conversations and interactions, both online and via, via your books. Uh, and I want to start from your story. How did you end up from Milan, where you're from, to the United States? And what elements of your Italian formation are the cornerstones of your work in Los Angeles? Well, I would say that I'm an atypical chef <laughs> since uh, when I was in Italy, I was a professional musician. I've been a musician for uh, over 20 years. I had the pleasure and the honor to play and perform uh, with the most uh, important Italian artists. And uh, so art has always been a great part of my life. Then uh, at one point I moved to, to the US, to LA with my husband. Uh, we felt Italy was kind of uh, too tight for us. So we need to explore something bigger. And uh, we moved to the United States. I followed him. Uh, he is now uh, teaching at the UCLA Musician Institute. He is a musician producer as well. But I took a different career. When I moved to the US, I felt it was time to change. And, uh, you know, the food has always been a great part of my life. I come from a family where food was so important. I grew up in a family that made me appreciate the good quality food. Uh, my uh, family taught me how to pick always the best ingredients, uh, that uh, less is more, that uh, poco ma buono, as we say in Italy. Mm -hmm. So uh, a few things, but uh, good quality things. And uh, so I always cook, uh, like since I was a kid, behind my, my grandmother, my nonna, which was an amazing cook. And uh, I said, okay, I, I should do something for the Italian food because here in the US, there is kind of a confusion about what is Italian food? <laughs> what are the real Italian food products? And unfortunately, what is the Italian sounding, which is a very bad uh, uh, aspect of uh, <laughs> for our economy in Italy. So that's how I ended up in uh, in LA, and uh, I would define myself um, above all like an Italian food advocate. I want to share uh, my knowledge uh, with all the people about what uh, really is Italian food, the one made in Italy, the products of Italy, the 100% made in Italy. And so I'm here. Well, thank you. This is really fascinating. <laughs> We've been talking in the show a lot about like, you know, the quality of the ingredients since you're a musician. You talk a lot about the Stradivaris, uh, the, uh, the violins made uh, in Cremona near Milan. Absolutely. Uh, where Very the close. quality <laughs> of the sound is what makes the difference. As you mentioned, the quality yes. of the ingredient is really the defining element of the innovative process or process of the distinction. Now, you also mentioned your grandmother, uh, Fernanda, who is the <laughs> solid ground for your work. Uh, but uh, one thing that strikes me is that you also add to your recipes the expression with a twist of me. And this is really interesting for me because in dealing with the Italian cuisine, and we talked about it in another episode dedicated to Massimo Bottura, there is a temptation to immobilize Italian tradition in kind of a fixed repertoire in a set of stereotypes also, or local tradition that need to be preserved in, in purity. But how do you innovate a set cookbook? That's the real issue. How do you avoid kind of mere repetition and yes. how do you develop a recipe? So I have to say, I published two books. Uh, the first one was uh, very traditional. I like dedicated this book, first book, A Queen in the Kitchen, to the Milanese cuisine and to the Northern Italian cuisine, because it was like such such an important gift 
to my grandmother who taught me everything. But uh, other than that, uh, I always try, uh, yes, to make it something different. As Picasso said, learn the rules like a pro, then break them like an artist. And that's what I do. I think you have to know the basis for sure. And then you can experiment. I love to experiment. Uh, the, my process of uh, like developing a recipe is uh, I'm kind of an, um, an artist. Even when I'm de developing my recipes, I sometimes have ideas um, watching like uh, the colors of some products or the smell. And then I uh, imagine them together and then I test them in the kitchen because sometimes <laughs> they are oh, definitely. <laughs> not great combinations. So you have to test all of your recipes. The palette is always like the ultimate test. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Sometimes you are very creative, too creative. So yes, it's, a, it's time to rejuvenate the Italian cuisine. We always talk about traditional Italian cuisine, which is like, to me, the best cuisine in the world, but also we need to, to do something different. And yes, Massimo Bottura is the example of uh, making an extraordinary uh, modern Italian cuisine. That's why he is the um, top chef, uh, Italian chef in the world nowadays. And um, I, I like to experiment. Uh, I... Um, it's like like for a painter, you use a, a palette of colors, and I use the ingredients. I'm like I'm obsessed with food, and even when I go to grocery stores, I I like to 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 touch, to see, to smell. Like that's a very important. So all the senses are involved in my uh, developing recipe developing. Definitely. And also, when like, you have, you mentioned painting uh, as a painter, the Italian tradition. Uh, can be a monument or can be an incredibly rich source to produce grounded innovation, not kind of the random Absolutely. pursuit of uh, novelties, but really the combination of elements that are grounded within an horizon of You're right. the taste, of something that makes sense, yeah. that allows you to know what works and what what no what doesn't exactly uh, exactly so. the combination is always a matter of combination the right combination <laughs> i would say and yeah, no, definitely and uh, there's a temperance in uh, in yeah. getting the right combination we often talk yes. also about the orchestra as a model of balance exactly uh, across different same. voices <laughs> Yes, like be maybe a musician helped me to develop this uh, kind of a sense of taste. And uh, yes, for sure. You know, a lot of musicians or like singers are also painters or poets. So there is not just one art. There are many arts involved. I think it's <laughs> like a cuisine is an art. For sure. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Also, this combination of instruments and arts is, is really what makes it distinctive. Yeah. Now, as, uh, as an Italian uh, writer and, and also blogger, you deal inevitably here in the United States with the category of Italian food. But as you know very well, the Italians would never describe their food as Italian, but rather as, as you mentioned earlier, exactly. Italianese, Sicilian, Roman, Umbrian, wherever the location is. Uh, following really the diverse patchwork of cuisines in the, in the, in the peninsula. But what makes a food Italian, in your opinion? What, what is authenticity for you, even working here in the United States? Sure. Uh, here in the United States, when I moved, uh, I was kind of wowed by the confusion about uh, Italian, what was real Italian food. I think uh, the, the biggest confusion is uh, uh, thinking that American Italian cuisine is the same as Italian cuisine. Uh, so that's what I try to uh, explain to the people that attend my classes. Uh, they are two different cuisines. I'm not, not judging one of the other, but they are different. So this is very important. I think authenticity is a, a great respect uh, of the tradition. So it's very important uh, to, uh, to be respectful of what uh, the past has been for our incredible uh, culinary culture. It's very important also to have knowledge because if if you don't know, you cannot improvise yourself. Oh, yes, I know everything about Italian food. No, you have to know. And especially us, I was born and raised in Milano. And so I lived in Italy for 35 years. 
and I have the the privilege to to travel around Italy and to know uh, like a lot about food and wine. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, that that's what maybe we are very privileged as Italian because uh, we grew up like in a very unique uh, uh, country so rich in history so rich in uh, beauty and uh, we maybe we have the taste inside of us <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a natural uh, uh, gift uh, from above and um, so it's very difficult to tell the people this is Italian this is not Italian uh, what bothers me the most is uh, the Italian sounding, as I told you before, because um, it's kind of um, making fun or like of the, the 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 real Italian food, the one made and product producted in Italy, uh, which is uh, has a very high standard, is a very uh, healthy, and uh, so I don't like when the like some um, brands they use Italian flags or Italian names mm. to to make people kind of, uh, okay, maybe it's Italian, but you know, then you read it and it's made somewhere else. No, no, definitely. So it's, it's also it's the important. counterfeit is really a exactly. big issue in the Italian is a food huge industry. Issue. Um, for our economy, is a big loss every single year for our beautiful country and economy. So yes, I always suggest to read the label, be sure that what you're uh, buying is says made in Italy or 100% made in Italy or products of Italy. So there are uh, some uh, little tips and tricks <laughs> to recognize uh, the real Italian food. So um, that's what I, I like to do. <laughs> no, definitely also because like in a, in a case like Parmigiano Reggiano, there are industries that like are built on a business model that is very uh, fragile. Uh, you know, yes. the friend Parmigiano has to kind of season for 10, 12, 24, yes. even 36 months. And uh, it, it means that you have to wait for three years before putting a product exactly. on, on the market. Exactly. And so- And it makes it, a big difference actually for your health. Definitely. First and foremost. So and for your it's taste. very important. <laughs> oh yes, also, also for that. Yeah, I grew up uh, <laughs> with Parmigiano Reggiano every single day. I still do. So uh, yes, it's very important to know what is real italian food mm -hmm. so it's very authenticity it's very important is knowledge i would say it's knowledge it's a form of genuineness and also in, yes. in your videos uh you really uh prove like this um authenticity by traveling to the places that you mentioned uh yes. through italy <laughs> <laughs> presenting really the cultural landscape behind the recipes, the ingredients, or the wines you deal with, yeah. and really tapping into one of the elements that make Italian food unique, which is, as you mentioned, like its territoriality, its, its rootedness in a local history. But how does a geographical landscape or cultural history affect the way a recipe is formed? And how do you propose or reinvent this variety of Italian culinary traditions in dialogue with the American landscape. Yes, that's what I do when I travel to Italy. I have a web series called a Queen in the Kitchen Estate Italiana, where usually I travel to Italy once a year. I couldn't last a uh, year, but I, I'll be in Italy this year. <laughs> and uh, I try to show people like how Parmigiano Reggiano is made, how traditional balsamico vinegar is made, or even other products because it's very important to know that like these products can be only done in specific part of Italy with specific conditions. For example, the bacche rosse, the red cow uh, that are only uh, a breed of the Northern Italian Italy, and especially in Emilia Romagna, in uh, la, 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 the, the Reggiana cow, is the only one that makes a specific uh, uh, milk very rich in casein for producing the vacche rosse parmigiano reggiano. No other uh, cows can do uh, can provide this kind of milk, and they are only fed with grass. So they follow very very specific and uh, straight uh, strict rules. So that's what makes a product very important. Last year I visited. Um, a prosciutto di Carpegna, where they made prosciutto di Carpegna. Carpegna is a tiny village on top of a mountain in the Marche region. I didn't even know <laughs> that they made a prosciutto. They made an incredible prosciutto. And uh, the prosciutto master told me, 
yes, the taste of this uh, prosciutto is so unique because of the quality of the air. Carpegna is one of the cleanest air in Italy. So that really defines a product and uh, is it very important. But I tell to um, like uh, my um, attendees to the classes or to my followers, to my public, to my audience, uh, if you can find some uh, uh, ingredients, because they are not even exported, so you cannot even find them, at least uh, shop local. Try to find like the best you can. Mm, try to find organic food or maybe go to the farmer's market because you can find good ingredients. So good health ingredients are the secret for a good cuisine, no matter is Italian or not. <laughs> Oh, also, and, and from your experience, also a good deal of storytelling in the sense that like uh, storytelling is what makes the difference between kind of watching a kind of food, watching another, and they're kind of yes. on the same level until someone tells you a story, until someone allows you to exactly put this food in, in your mouth and, and actually exactly. taste them. There, there's, it requires yes. a lot of education uh, yes. there. And in this sense, really, um, Italian cookbooks are a resource, but are also a uh, kind of stereotype genre in the American publishing market. And yeah. I really wanted to ask you, what differentiates your cookbook, like your new cookbook, No, no Ketchup on Spaghetti? I like the title. And uh, <laughs> how does one educate really an audience that has already a prepackaged notion of what Italian food is, or sometimes an audience that cannot find the original ingredient, as you were saying, and in, in doing this, what what did you do, what did you discover of your tradition in dialogue with with clients, readers, and and students? Also, in your work as a as a cooking instructor, what, what was their greatest discovery? <laughs> so some of them they are kind of uh, <laughs> uh, they, they 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 are um, how can I say? This is they are shocked <laughs> when I tell them. Or oh, maybe this is not an Italian dish <laughs> because they thought for many years uh, like that that was an Italian dish. So uh, most of them, they are, yes, shocked is, is the reaction. But, um, you know, mm, my book, I would define my book, my second book, No Ketchup or Spaghetti, as a guide. I also have uh, recipes included because I want to show how to uh, use the products I'm, I'm talking in the book, but most is a guide. Uh, how uh, like uh, to uh, pick the right ingredients, tips and tricks. I also have included tips and tricks from great Italian chefs that are not me. <laughs> that are that, uh, uh, I and also I'm very uh, like, I'm thankful because they have accepted to be part of it. So it's it's um it's a guide. So it's also very. I have here the copy. <laughs> it's very like light, uh, very very simple to read. And uh, like if you uh, go to the market, you can bring it with you and maybe read what is a real Parmigiano Reggiano. How do I spot a real Parmigiano Reggiano other than Fontina or uh, uh, Prosciutto Toscano or Arancia Rossa di Sicilia? So we have such a great variety of great products. Italy has uh, almost or I would say maybe more than 300 DOP and PGI products, which means uh, the top quality European uh, products uh, with a status issued by the European Con Commission. So we have uh, <laughs> great, great products. People so are, uh, um, they really listen to uh, the advices and uh, most of them, they've been to Italy many times. And what they tell me is why when I cook it at home, it doesn't taste like it was in Italy because of the ingredients. <laughs> Maybe they use some ingredients here, you cannot find them. So I suggest them if you can find them, try to eat local, try to go to the farm, try to go to the farmer's market. Uh, but like if you have the opportunity to buy the real one, pick the right one. Some of them uh, I noticed they know how to make like a carbonara perfectly. They, 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 they have mastered the recipe but they use the wrong ingredients. So they put the bacon, they put the, um, um, a lot of uh, other <laughs> ingredients that are not like, they, they, they use the <laughs> Romano cheese, which is not the Pecorino Romano. So I try to tell them it's not the same. You have to use Pecorino mm -hmm. Romano. 
then you can be creative and do other things. Uh, so that's what I uh, notice the most. Uh, for me, it's very, it's, it's always important because this book, uh, like, uh, came to my mind after having taught all the classes, and I realized, I okay, that's what they are. Uh, the Americans are confused confused about. So let's <laughs> write something different that is not just a recipe book. We have like millions of Italian recipe books. Some are outstanding, <laughs> some, some less. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yes, maybe mine is slightly different to the other one. And so I'm happy about that. <laughs> now, writing and cooking, as, as you mentioned, are, are really two similar activities of yes. combination, fusion, and really amalgamation of different elements in, in a synthesis, in a balanced synthesis. Uh, can you describe your creative process, like both in cooking and in, and in writing? And how do you create a story or a narration around the recipe? Are they similar processes? Yeah, they are very similar. They are like uh, when you write a, a, um, a song, <laughs> uh, there is something that triggers your idea. And as I told you, for me, it can be like a, uh, a taste of something, a smell of something, even watching something. Uh, nature is uh, is for me very important because sometimes, like I, I watch a beautiful sunset and I think about like a, a dessert. So I'm kind of a, an imaginary, a visionary <laughs> cook, and I love it. Like uh, yes, I'm a really uh, like to um, first of all. I know the recipe, the original recipe, and then I experiment mm -hmm. the recipe <laughs> with other flavors. I like also, since I live in a city like LA, which is a multicultural, I like to put uh, ingredients from other cultures because it, it's nice. It's time also to to make some fusion with uh, our cuisine. Um, I love other cuisines and I like to put some of their uh, like uh, traditional ingredients into my dishes and they comes out nice <laughs> so yeah we, we need to be more multicultural at this point <laughs> oh definitely and uh, in one of the episodes on um the olfactory designer maria candida gentile um she's like really one of the um she's the most important art, uh, designer of artistic perfumery wow. um we talked about the impact of smell but in your case uh taste as yes. really a platform to develop connections and to yes. join different arts together uh, or join different sensorial realms uh, together. So in the sense, uh, this is quite an interesting story where the word sapere in Italian, which means to know, is actually connected to the word sapere, the same word, which in Italian means to savor. Uh, actually exactly. The, 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 the taste as an, an epistemological sense or actually Yes. The ideal platform as smell, you mentioned it, like going around nature uh, for uh, allowing artistic combinations uh, for Maria Candida yes. Gentile, smell is actually evocative of um, poetry or yes. uh, landscapes yes. and the same way as you described. Food is it's like the, the same. Yes, yeah. it's very similar because like, um, like I have a, like a very good smell as well. And I'm always like caught by these uh, fragrances uh, around. I have a lemon tree and uh, oh my goodness, sometimes I just go out and to smell the, the, this amazing perfume and I feel better. So it's like a therapy, like uh, art is a therapy in mm -hmm. every form. So cooking, uh, doing perfumes or um, designing, painting is everything is art and uh, yes <laughs> nice and also the word fragrance uh from my classical <laughs> repertoire comes from flagrare which means to burn uh which mm -hmm. is what um makes a product fresh or, or authentic and i like the idea of connecting to the local food because it's it's connecting to the idea yes. of freshness of something that is burning hot that is coming exactly, to you exactly. as, as a real fragrance that makes it yes. new every time. So yes. uh, definitely. And yes. go when ahead. you talk about uh, like cuisine or cooking is not just the taste, is everything, even touching. I love to bake bread 
And uh, I always say like, maybe it's one of my favorite things to do when you have your hands in the dough is such a, an emotion uh, is something therapeutic for me and then for the people that are going to eat what I baked. But uh, yes, you involved all of yourself, not mm -hmm. only like the taste for the cuisine or the sight for the art or the ears for the music. It's not like that. It's uh, all the senses included. <laughs> no, definitely. It's not, it's not a technique, but it's really a, a, a human art. Um, yes. Handmade is really a, a unique gesture that makes the product something different and new, but also old and rooted every, every time. So that's kind exactly. of like a secret recipe. Oh, yeah, the Italian exactly. way to, to oh work. my god, yes. <laughs> now, and after I have to all, say, uh -huh. like a, a lot of families have different, slightly different recipe, and they all taste good. What makes the difference is the ingredient that you have used for making this recipe. So I'm not so strict about all oh, this recipe should be done only like that. No, you can kind of put your your own twist, but uh, I'm very strict about the quality of the ingredients, yes. <laughs> no, 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 definitely. And I'm sure, as you mentioned with your uh, grandmother, uh, like the, the stories that um, the nonni, the grandparents are telling, they're kind of always the same, but every time they uh, remember, they happen differently. They add a different particular, they add exactly. something else, you know, to make them an event. So in a sense, also food, uh, even the traditional food becomes always new because Something there's always new. an element of uh, event that makes it yes, an event. Yes, that's true, uh, that's true, uh, that's true. And also remember that they used to say one pinch of this, one, some of that. <laughs> so they don't have like uh, specific measures. <laughs> measures Definitely. Food. Every this time is... it tastes maybe a little bit uh, different from the previous time. But then, it, this is great because we are human, so it's fine. We we don't want to have everything the same, same, same flavor like uh, the big chains. They are proposing you always the the same food that tastes always yeah. the same. The customization, wherever you're... yeah, exactly. Of the I, I, love, I like the human part of it. Even like making a little mistake is human, so it's mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> And also, you also explain the meaning of the uh, acronym QB that you find in le in um, Italian recipe books. Quanto basta, which Quanto means like, basta. What, what is enough, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> which goes back to this How much do you want? lived <laughs> lived experience of, of of cuisine of cooking. Now, That's I wanted true. to ask you at the end of this conversation, really, if you were to pick a recipe as as a synthesis of our conversation, what where would you start? Which one would you choose? Tiramisu. <laughs> <laughs> For why, many why? reasons. So first of all, I love tiramisu. So I'm a tiramisu lover. And lately I just became a founding member of the Tiramisu Academy of California, which is uh, like a... Uh, a branch of the Tiramisu Academy in Treviso. And I'm very glad and happy we're going to do, it's not just about Tiramisu, it's about uh, Italian culture, Italian cuisine, Italian travel. So it's everything about Italy <laughs> is included. And uh, my Tiramisu, the one in the book is the classic one, the one that uh, actually my mom taught me how to make the Tiramisu, not my grandmother, because she was unique. She cooked everything but she didn't like to cook desserts <laughs> so my grandma used to cook everything and my grandmother and my mother used to do the, the, the desserts so it's a combination no. <laughs> of the two but the, the one that i i love to do the most is my i would call it signature tiramisu which is a royal tiramisu I call it royal because I use uh, uh, rose petals and I use uh, uh, English uh, tea, uh, black tea. And uh, actually it's not English tea, <laughs> it's uh, Asian tea, like Indian or, uh, or Chinese tea. And uh, um, gold, edible gold. So it's a kind of a unique, very, very... Uh, elegant uh, even at the, the taste uh the the, the tea makes everything uh, not so strong like the coffee and i also put some uh, crushed uh, pistachios to give a little bit of crunchiness and uh, i love it the, the, the this uh, uh aftertaste of roses is unique 
So the royal tiramisu. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. I look forward to trying it or to try and do it myself and then flying to Absolutely. LA. <laughs> oh, exactly. Maybe the first time we're going to meet in person, we can uh, <laughs> have a nice uh, royal tiramisu together. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for this conversation, uh, which is very entertaining and very profound uh, and thank light you. at the same time. Uh, we talked about the relationship between food and territory, food and creativity, and also food and narration, storytelling. And it was a real, real pleasure chatting with you. Thanks thank again. Thank you so much. The, the pleasure has been all mine. And uh, anytime I'm here to talk about <laughs> good, healthy food. <laughs> Fantastic. And thanks everybody for listening. And I invite you to subscribe to this channel or to the newsletter on the webpage of the show at www.timeandinnovators.com to receive notifications on new episodes and know more about this project. You can also follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn for updates, news, and additional materials. Thanks again for your support. Arrivederci. Alla prossima. <laughs>